And I'm Sawyer, and you're listening to Our House A to Z. All right, welcome back out there. How are we doing? I'm our, doing great. Our house land. I'm doing great. Yeah? Good. Yep. I'm doing Good. great. Good. We just had the Spiritual Warfare Conference this past weekend. Yep. We married off some greats in the uh, church. Matt and Carolyn. Yep. And congratulations to um, you two. So busy weekend. Yes. I mean, really busy weekend. Your mom was in town with a friend. Very busy weekend. For two weeks. So it's been busy. Yes. It's been busy. Yes. But I thought you said you you are not a fan of the word busy, right? I know. You don't like to say we're busy. I know. I always kind of say like, yeah, there's a lot going on or, right. you know. There was a lot going there on. There was a lot going on. A lot I mean, going I don't feel I, I don't have the same like, you know, stigmatism attached to the busy. word busy. Yeah, but I do understand it. I think it's smart to not just throw I'm always busy, 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 busy. It's like Yeah. I think it just kinda You're like, permissive. are you doing anything like yeah. intentional or is it just Right. Like you just caught up in a whole bunch of Busy. Busy. Yeah. Cause I think that happens really probably easier and faster than we think. That's true. That's true. But yeah, the Spiritual uh, Warfare Conference was phenomenal, and we're going to probably highlight some things on that maybe in a few weeks, mm -hmm. because there's a lot to a lot to cover there. Right. But yeah. Yep. It was great. There was a lot of, of really great teachings. There was a couple things that I personally, like my theology, disagrees with, and so that's, those are the things that I kind of wanted to talk about on the podcast in right. the next couple of weeks. So right. we'll hit those. What else is going on? Well, we are always and ever in the middle. We were just lamenting last night about how many projects we have in the irons and the fire. I have so much to do. <laughs> it's just projects. It's like, I don't know which one to go work on, which is actually exactly what my personality type is, is to like always start in so many projects without finishing any that you don't know which I one to go like to. I feel like you do finish. I feel like once you get really invested in something, you finish it. Yeah. Like if it's a big thing, yeah. I feel like anytime you start little things, you'll start a lot of little things. So my biggest, but I, I think my, I do the same thing. But I think my I think my biggest issue is that I don't have like large blocks of time to dedicate to anything. So like for instance, it's like walk, the outfit. Now I've changed into my work clothes exactly, mm -hmm. and then I have to change back because I have like a meeting to go to or something, something. Yeah. Like, but the the wallpaper in the stairwell mm -hmm. is a perfect example. That's a great example. How many days now? So many days. So many days. But not. But here's the deal: if I had had the right amount of wallpaper, if we had not run out of glue, like there were a couple things that caused delays. I feel like. Yeah, but every time I've done it, I haven't had even a full half a day. Right. It's like an hour and a half here. Put up. Yep. Put up two runs here. You know, then yep. wash everything out, clean everything up. Clean the brush. I know. I know. So that does get frustrating, but it looks good. It actually looks It looks amazing. great. It actually. I love it. It's like really the right choice. So. I love it. Yeah. And now I'm not even finished with that wallpaper and the next round of wallpaper <laughs> for another room came in. So. I know, but I, I'm going to try to do this one with you. I'm going to try to help you with this oh, one. Oh, I like it. I know. I like projects we do together. Do you? I do. I love it. I mean, I also love to listen to music while I, while I work, but I love to listen to you. Well, I just like to listen to a podcast, so. There you go. You can listen to your music and I can listen to my You can listen to me. What do I say? And then we'll, I don't say anything. We'll, that'll be definitely, that's definitely quality time. That's a okay. wow. No. So, uh, yeah, I was just thinking about like all the projects and everybody has projects. Everybody yeah. out there has projects. Well, I think what's interesting is home is so different to everybody. You know, like what is home to you? Like when you were growing up, like do you think of home and like what what is that? Well, I'm not so sentimental that it's like, oh, home is wherever my family is. It okay. wasn't that. Home was just the house I lived in. Okay. So nothing significant about it. Like did home, what feelings does home give you? Now as an adult or like when you so you were talking about childhood? I mean, I was talking about childhood. Do you, is it very different? No, I, I liked home. I like to be home. Um, like growing up, you yeah, liked to be home. I like to be outside in my house. You know? Did you feel like in your bedroom? Like, did you feel safe? Did you feel I comfortable? Know, I think like, safe was ever a word I would use. What to about comfortable? It. What about cozy? Did you like things to be cozy? Did you like your like bedding cozy? I didn't even have a bed until I was like in middle school. So I slept in a sleeping bag on a hardwood floor for okay. quite a bit. I shared a waterbed with my sister as a little kid. Okay. And then we moved to another house and I had my own room and I, yeah, I remember I slept on the floor. And then my great 
aunt, we call her Nanki, she bought me a loft bed. It was like a bunk bed without the mm-hmm. bottom, and I thought I like died and went to heaven. How old were you when you got that bed? Like middle schoolish. Okay. Yeah. And then you had that bed. I mean, all the way till we got married. Till we gave it to my your nephew. nephew. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But here's the deal with home for me. I feel like it is so like it encapsulates so much. Yeah. Like home to me, it's like very like safe. Yeah. Comfortable. I like things cozy. I feel like I'm have to like have the right like smell yeah and oh smell is huge smell is huge well i know when we just bought this house like it you you it takes a while for yes. like, the smell of the even having all the floors redone polyurethane yep. and everything yep. fresh paint well because you still have wallpaper um you have <clears throat> yeah there's still stuff yeah like there's still so much stuff sure. that's just holding scent <laughs> that's holding old scent well i think i think that um there's so much out there now like with hgtv mm-hmm. And Home Depot, and um, I don't have social media, but as I scroll through yours, yeah. there's so many, and it's probably just like the things that you watch and yeah. follow and stuff, but there's so many like- Like DIY uh, opportunities. stuff? Opportunities, yeah, yeah, projects. Like, oh, do this, do your backsplash, or right. you know, do your steps on your back porch, mm-hmm. or do your sunroom, or whatever. Do your curtains, do your whatever. And I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, but I, I know that it has so many people are looking for ways to like update spruce something, up their house. spruce yeah. it up. And I just like, I don't know. I wanted to ask you what your thoughts were on this because I feel like now we're in our third house. Mm-hmm. Number three. How do you, you go into a house and you're going to make it yours. Mm-hmm. Maybe you've lived there a long time, maybe not, but not everybody moves into a house and just has a boatload of money to spend right because usually it costs a boatload of money just to move yep. to buy a house to like get all your stuff there all that kind of stuff so if you had some options let's say you had twenty five hundred dollars to do uh, a room or to do how no, much how, do what do i have to do anything. with twenty five hundred i'm saying oh. you have <laughs> to you have to make a house here so where would you start Oh gosh, that's so hard to say. Well, I think that some people, I think one mistake that it's going to be very tempting for me because I'm a stuff guy. Yeah. One thing that can be very tempting is to buy a piece of furniture that I really like. Yeah. And the problem is- See, uh, I don't have that. Okay. I don't have that. I'm not like I need a new piece of furniture well, ever. you have a lot of like nice furniture that you've picked out and that you've procured over the years. But I feel like what, what can happen when you're young is you're like, I love this chair and you see it in like a vintage store or you see it at a yard sale or you see it in Cardi's or whatever and you buy it, you get the five years, zero interest or whatever. (laughs) But the problem is a house swallows up one piece of furniture. I know. Like, I mean, a house swallows up five pieces of furniture. So what would you say are like some of your go-to strategies to like really, you're walking through somebody else's house. You're an improver. Yeah. By nature, by wiring, you're an improver. You can't stop, yep. right? You won't stop. Nope, won't so, stop. So in every room you walk into, you're like, I'm gonna improve. you're looking around. <laughs> you're not probably not going to improve, but you're going to <laughs> constructively criticize in your mind. So what are you thinking? Like if this was my room, what would I do in here? Would it be a rug first? Would it be a, f- a wall color? I think in this case, what flooring do I have at I don't this know. point? I don't know. Well, I mean, because I, is there a rug down? Is there is it a carpeted room? I'm, I suppose if the house smells funny, the rugs would probably be the first thing to go because yeah. smell hits us so quickly, right? I think there are things that are always inexpensive. If you had twenty five hundred dollars, I mean, paint is cheap. Okay, right? You can get a good gallon of paint for fifty fifty bucks. Okay, so paint every room and make it yours. But yeah, I mean, I think tips? that's all. What are some tips? I think textures are really important. I think a lot of times we want things to be clean looking. So we kind of just don't think of all the different layering pieces that make something feel cozy. Okay. Give me an example because people hear layering and they're thinking haircuts and they're thinking. (laughs) I don't think anybody's thinking haircuts. Scrapbooks and they're thinking. I don't know. What people are thinking probably lots of things. What's a what's a real life example of layering? A rug. I mean, you put like a rug down if it's out on hardwood floors. Okay. Now I'm going to put like a rug down. Okay. And for me personally, I like to bring color in because I like color. Okay. So simple texture things for color. Put a nice rug down. So we've probably joked on here before, but in the past, we've had color problems with our church. 
um, where color problems. Well, well, when we when we were in Seekonk, I was so mad because we moved from one end of the building where we painted everything in Wilmington tan with oh. sage accents. Remember the yes. sage accents? Yes. And then the whimsical tree wall. It was like the Hobby Lobby Church. I loved those colors. Mm-hmm. They were so warm and they were so nice. And then we moved down to the other end, and it was Fifty Shades of Grey. Like the whole, every yep. single wall, every surface in the church was gray on gray on gray on gray. I would just like gray. to say this. I think I had a baby sometime around them because I do not remember any conversation about pink color, yeah. picking colors, nothing. I just remember it being all gray and you like losing your mind. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the nursery was like bicycle yellow, I think, but it was still too much gray and it was stressing me out big time. You so, don't like gray. That said, I know, but some people love gray. You well, can't just well, hate on gray. I, some people know, love the gray. If you're talking to a new homeowner, I know a lot of people are buying a house that's been flipped, right? Because mm-hmm. it's so popular to flip a house. And one of the main things that people do when they're flipping a house is buy a few five-gallon buckets of gray paint and paint every single room gray. Every single room the same Because color. it's clean and it's fresh. But some people they're really like over. that. People who are buying like any type of new-build house, they like the most gray people tones. who are buying any house that was built after 2000, most of those people tend to like that kind of feel. The super you know what I think? clean what? I think people don't like that feel, but they don't know they don't like it. I think people would prefer something different, but they don't even know how to get there. And that's kind of what I want you to speak to. Somebody walks into a house and there's nothing about that house that but says I have a good them. friend, Karen Eaton, and she <laughs> likes gray. She likes white. She likes grays. Does not like color. Well, white's nice. White can be nice. White Her can be and my warm. sister feel like, you know, like I have too much stuff. It's too much going on. There's too many stuff. But I like it's what I like. Like yeah. it feels like a home to me. It feels cozy. Yeah. It doesn't feel sterile. Yeah. You know? Okay. And I like that. That's fair. Okay. So some people like sterile and cold. Yeah. But I think people Because they still, feel it's like cleaner. Even if you like the colder tones, people want to know how to make a house their home. And how do you connect? Okay, so you just said a statement. I like color. Yeah. How do you translate I like color into picking the right colors that go together in your house? Oof. Because I think you do a really good job at that. Thank you. I think, in fact, you're unsettled right now because we haven't done as much of that in our house yet. Yeah. You know, we still have old wallpaper in a couple rooms. I know. I I mean, we've only been there for like six months or whatever, but I walk around. I'm like, I'm living in somebody else's house. I know. Part but it's getting there, yeah, little pieces, a little it bit is. at a time. It's it's starting to smell like our house, it which is. is good. Yes. Lots of diffused oil. Yes. There's like a cocktail <laughs> of diffused oil like wafting through uh, the hallways. It's so nice. It is nice. So, see, and that's those, those are the things. It's little things like that. I feel like a diffuser. Okay. I feel good. like diffusers are like a great little thing. Pick an oil you like and- Pick some oils. Get it in the air. It has like a little like light. It's calming. It's cozy. I like a nice tossed blanket over. I like lots of pillows on a couch. See, now I would call that layering. Yeah. If you take, if you have a leather couch and you can lay like a some sort of fur or thick blanket over it, now you don't have the sterility of the lo- of leather. Just the cold, yeah. You have the and some pillows that are different textures, like yeah. not all the exact same. Like these pillows came with the couch when I bought it you at Cardi's. Throw those away. Throw those away or buy covers for you, them. Yeah, you can. And just add different colors, not the exact same pillow all the way across, you know? Yeah. Like do some different things yep. that have like some tones. I think sometimes if you, I think if you start with one thing, if mm-hmm. you fall in love with a rug or you fall in love with a curtain panel that you like, this is the color, like this tone of green or this tone of brown, this tone of red, like this is the color that I love, love, love. Yeah. Okay. Great start. Like, find something. You saw a a room at somebody's house painted a certain color. You loved that. Start with that. Okay. So oh, that's what I usually do is I start with my first thing, like something that I really, really love. So maybe that is the piece of furniture if you find that chair. If... Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a, if it's a chair that has color to it. Yeah. For sure. And then you everything is built off of that, you know? So it's not like... When I say color, I don't mean a room that's just like... 10 different colors and they're just all over in random places. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you pick one color and then accent colors that go with that. Now, most people will say start with the floor covering. If it's hardwoods, maybe you're picking a stain color, maybe Mm -hmm. you're not. But so first thing would be your rug 
And usually rugs will have some, di- I mean, at least our rugs all have some different colors in them. But then you're picking a color out of that to do the wall. Yeah, again, that's only if you really like that rug. Like, Because I, f- I feel like if I was going to go into a room and I would say, okay, I want this room in particular to be, like we just painted a room um, a pretty dark green. And I love that. I'm not going to go now try to find like a colored rug that's green right. to go into that room a lot of green. or something that's really busy if and anything, a lot of you color. Need to, you need to balance out the dark. You need to bring something light. That's what I'm saying. In. So I'm yeah. not going to go in and say, well, first things first, I need to like worry about putting a colored rug. It's like, no, I want something a lot lighter for mm-hmm. the floor now because I have darker walls. So I think those are the balance kind of things. If you yeah. do dark walls, you do a light color rug. If you do yeah. a, a really busy beautiful printed rug that you're like obsessed with. Okay. That's awesome. Pick one of the lightest tones out of that rug that you're going to pick now for your wall color. Right. And a light color. Okay. So now something light furniture wise and curtain wise, the same thing. You're not a lot of like dark things. If you have a really busy anything, if you have a yeah. painting in your room, that's like this giant painting and it's beautiful and it has all these colors in it. That's awesome. You you love that. That's like your focus piece in your room, your focal point. Okay, now I'm going to pull different colors from that to do in my rug and in my curtains and with pillows in the room. That's kind of that's good. That's, that's kind of how I that's good think advice. about it. So now rooms of the house. Talk about where you would spend the most. Like somebody moves into a house. Again, they move into, let's just say it's very common, right, in yeah. this area young family maybe first or second time they're buying a house it's a raised ranch it's a split level Mm -hmm. it's a whatever a ranch a cape cod or even like an apartment or something i don't know but i guess you're not really renovating an apartment probably but Mm -hmm. um what would yeah or a cape where would you zero in to make that house yours would it be the to make it mine or would it be the or you're saying like where's the best bang for your buck with money I mean, I guess both, but like so somebody's like, where do I even start? There's a whole house here that needs to be done. Yeah. I think that's so personal. Like for me, it usually starts with like where we spend the most time. I feel like I usually want to invest right away in spaces that I can. Okay. It depends on money. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes, like we bought wallpaper that I had wanted for years. I invested the money in it. And then I had the rolls for... I think I ordered them before we moved into the house, the first roll. And I just carried the roll from room to room, deciding where I was going to put this wallpaper. Okay. I knew I wanted it. Now, quick tip on wallpaper. If you are doing any type of wallpaper, colorful, busy wallpaper, small areas. You don't want to do really like a giant, you're not going to do a whole room. No, it'll be like a magic eye. Yes, you would feel like you're in a magic eye. You don't want to do that. But you can do that if it's in a small room. You could do a little bathroom. You can do the wallpaper the whole room. Yeah. And it's fine. It's like a little, that's just like, like an a, accent. Or like a wall that already has a big mirror on it. So there's like not a lot of wall So you're wall not seeing left. a lot of yeah. wall. Otherwise, if you have a really busy, colorful wallpaper and you want to do that in like your living room, pick a wall. Pick an area, do above a chair rail, mm. not like let's wallpaper our living room with this really busy. That will not be good. That'll be very hard to do anything right. else in there and you'll make your guests dizzy. Yeah. Um <laughs> But you people can you can wallpaper. <laughs> a lot of people, you move into a house and it's not always the most cost effective thing to do to now repair your walls because some of the older houses around here, you start peeling wallpaper or the people before you peeled wallpaper and you're dealing with like crap walls. And if you don't have the money to be like, I need them either re drywalled and plastered mm-hmm. or whatever, sometimes wallpaper is your best option. And in a case like that, when you have a big room, mm-hmm. you can wallpaper with things that are not busy, like not busy prints. You can get, I mean, they have that like grass cloth that's like really nice, just. Yeah. Um, it's not cheap. No, it's not cheap. I think that's, it's one, not cheap. that's one thing about good good wallpaper, like decent wallpaper. It's not cheap. But you can also, if there's like old wallpaper, we've done this in a couple times. Sometimes it works good. Sometimes it doesn't. But you can mm-hmm. paint it. Mm-hmm. And that'll get you through like a year or two until you want to like really take it all down. I mean, we painted over we plaster. painted over wallpaper in our last sunroom. And it was there 10 years. I mean, we painted it when we moved in. It was like a, it was a textured wallpaper. And it was like that when we moved out. And it was like that when we moved out because sometimes you just don't. Sometimes you can't get to everything. Well, that was kind of a cool, that, that wallpaper was thick, so it took paint really well. And it was- And it was um, textured. And it was textured. And so it actually looked like intentional. And we chose a color that like looked like it could have been, you know, that 
texture yeah like original so yeah i think i think there's some things you can do and when you do paint wallpaper one quick tip is you're gonna get stressed out because as it gets wet it bubbles up and you're like oh my god I'm ruining this is the worst thing i've ever and then done that, when the paint dries it just dries flat yep. again it's totally fine and worst case scenario bubble stays in there you just take a little tiny pin and you can poke it yep. and push it down yeah but I think a word of advice is to try not to do any expensive, trendy things. I think there are some things we see come down the pipe and it's like uber trendy. So like what you see in a magazine or what you see. <sighs> yeah, I mean, some things you see in a magazine are great, but know, I'm but trying to think of, what, what's I'm trying example? to give an example. I'm trying oh, to come up with something. Wall. But that's not, <laughs> but expensive. not expensive. Those are the things where I'm like, hey, it's a trend right now. And you yeah. like that trend. You love it. You're like, let's do this. Awesome. Yeah. Because it's cheap. Do it because it's it cheap. It might be like one quart of paint, depending on the size of the wall. Yes. You know? Okay. Here's an example. I loved the black windows that came out 10 years ago mm -hmm. when everybody was doing their black windows yeah. black. The modern farmhouse. Modern right? farmhouse. It was black. It's black trim, black, black sashes, black, uh, I don't even know all the words for all the pieces of the window. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. all black. Beautiful. So nice. Do not go and change out all, unless you have endless money and you are buying new windows anyway. If you have endless money, you're probably paying somebody else to yeah. make these. Don't go and try to like, decisions. now I'm going to try to hand paint all of these black sashes and these black windows, or I'm going to replace all of these windows. Right. Because 10 years from now, that might be like completely done. And now you've spent like, and you're still thirty, off. forty, fifty thousand yeah. dollars on oh. new windows for your house, and you're like, oh, HELOC I'm kind of over something. it. Yeah, I'm over like... it now, and you're like, okay, <laughs> take out a loan. Yeah, that's not house. that's not a good investment unless, again, you were already buying all brand new windows for your house because maybe you moved into an old house that weren't efficient windows, whatever. Yeah. Like that case, you know. Yeah, but I I do understand the allure of it because you you do it, and now we bought a house that actually had black windows from like the 70s yep. or 80s or something. All the windows had been done in black. Yep. And that was uh, our last house. Mm -hmm. It was and good timing. It was good timing. It just worked out. You know, and, it's we like, still... and as long as you were far away, you couldn't tell that it was all like lead paint that was like chipping and stuff like right, that. That's, tr that's true. Um, <laughs> hopefully those new owners aren't listening. Uh, but then but then we did paint. We did paint the whole exterior aside from the windows. Mm -hmm. Because the whole house was one solid color. Remember yep. that? Yeah. Everything. It was like they had extra, they got a sale on paint or something. Everything. They it just was, sprayed the whole thing. And interior, the, yeah. the kitchen. Remember, the kitchen everything was, was completely sprayed. The same color. It was Pale. Wild. It was like Robin's egg blue. Yeah. Beautiful. Here's beautiful. another thing that I think I do that I try to be intentional about. I try not to buy anything. I don't want to say anything. I don't know if anything's where it's not. It's not really anything, but like I try not to buy something that I know somebody else is going to have in their house. I like to buy something that's a little bit more unique, not something like, OK, I walked down the aisles at Target and they had really cute things. That's great for like serveware, maybe like a little blanket but if or you something buy it at Target, like that. Like a guaranteed four other people are going to have it. Yeah. You know. And it takes the way the unique feeling of your house. Like this is my house. You're, it's, it's more of like a, I'm want my house to be exactly like everybody else's. And it's yeah. like, that's not really what you're going for. You want it to be a reflection of your family. Like, yeah. hey, we're kind of a little eclectic and, you know, yeah. we like weird things. Fine. So like, that's what our house ends up looking like. When we bought our house, one of my favorite things about our house is that it still has furniture in it that looks like it was like original to the house, which I don't know that it necessarily was. It's possible. Yeah. The former owners left a lot of it. We found a couple of boxes in the basement that were marked estate sale mm -hmm. that they just never got around to get room getting rid of. And so we actually pulled some of those things out and put them in the hutches, like some of those old antique, like silver things that you'll like never use. But they're just like really cool yeah. because they're like era appropriate. But um, I just think that anything with a story uh, yeah, is helpful. Anything I do. I agree. But I think even like for our house, the balance of that is what you always have to figure out because I don't want to feel like I'm living in like an 1800s inn. Like, I don't want to feel like that. I don't mm -hmm. want like all the furniture and the that, feels. That shit might have sailed because you are living in. An I know, but I'm just inn. saying like, I don't want to feel like that. I want it to be like this right mix of yeah. like there's new, there's us, there's some old like that yeah. kind of like winks at the history part of it. Sure. But yeah, and it's expensive. It's really hard. 
I think we get overwhelmed really fast. Speaking from experience, we get overwhelmed really fast with our homes sometimes because we're like, oh, I got to do the bathroom and the kitchen's terrible and my bedroom's terrible and my bedding is old and I don't like our couch is so old. That's the couch we got when we got married and we can get like so frustrated. Mm -hmm. But over time, you do it just do a little bit at a time or you like focus on one area at a time. And I think that that's where the greatest challenge is, the focus Mm -hmm. in one space. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, so you would say, okay, where you spend the most time. So your living room. And kitchen. Or your kitchen. Living room and kitchen. I feel like those are, for us, those are the two. What's happening? You're having like major like gastro today. You just. Nope. No? Just normal. Just normal? Normal. That black coffee on an empty stomach. That I drink every single day. I know. Do it to yourself every day. (laughs) Um, Yeah, for us, kitchen and living room. It's where our family always is, the kitchen and living room. And I think that's pretty normal. I think that's most families spend a lot of time there. So I like those two places to be yeah. us and cozy. That's been one of the hard things when you don't have the money to renovate a kitchen. Yeah. We've painted a lot of cabinets. Yep. Oh, we have. Um, yes. Painted a lot of cabinets. Yes, we have. And we've used secondhand cabinets. We've used secondhand cabinets. And they looked awesome. Yep. And so. now we're in that pickle right now where it's like, what are we going to do with this kitchen? I know. Oh, what are we going to do? It feels like somebody else's kitchen. I don't know. It's just going to be a bigger undertaking. And that's also a can of worms, right? Like that's also the hard part about a house. And mm-hmm. for any old house lovers out there, that's that's a really serious part. <laughs> everything you open up, every wall it's you a take can down, of worms. everything you undo. It's always like, oh, and now we're going to fix that too. And then you fix that. And it's like, oh, now we got to do the floor too. And yeah. So uh, uh, it's now fun tell me your thoughts on shiplap. Where are you right now with shiplap? I, I think I'm over it. We put it in a bathroom. I think that's the only place we ever, we did it in our house. We, we put it in a bathroom. Five years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I bought it and I primed it and I put it up. And I loved it in that room. And right now I love it in that room. Mm -hmm. It's a very small wall. It was a very small wall. It was a very small bathroom. Very small bathroom. Maybe a water closet. (laughs) (laughs) It had a shower. Is there something less than a half bath? Yeah, like a third bath. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, it did have a shower. It did have a shower. It was a very small shower. Um, But yeah, I think that in that room, I mean, we covered that shiplap with photos yeah remember that Mm -hmm. so yeah i think that it was cool we did a like a milk paint over it it wasn't a milk paint but it was like a milk paint you know something where the knots of the pine came through and it looked really cool so all of that like i thought looked appropriate yeah it felt like you know what we wanted to feel like and we decorated accordingly we had like rustic hooks on the wall and we had that antique corner sink you know, with the, mm-hmm. you know, it looked like it was out of like a, like a high school football fields, boys bathroom or something. So yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of other things that made the shiplap work there. I don't like the modern looking shiplap. Yeah. Like when you do the shiplap in a, everything else is modern. I think Now you would you say to... shiplap? I mean, I guess depending on how much you do, expensive cho- add on or not expensive? Oh, uh, I would say that's cheap because you know, again, I'm doing it myself, right? Yep. So if you're paying somebody, that's, I have no idea what it costs to do ship lab versus anything else, but I would say it's always been pretty yeah. cheap. Cause I, I think if you're thinking song. about doing it right now, unless you're like wicked committed to it, like, are just like obsessed with the ship lab look, I'd say ship laps yeah. out. It was a trend. It was a trend. Yeah. Again, Thank a you, great Joanna trend. Gaines. Thank you, Joanna Gaines. She's amazing. Yeah. If you notice, she's not doing any ship lab. Right. You know, which is good. It's just interesting about how like how long it takes trends to catch on. Yeah. And I think some people, they're like discovering it now, you know, not realizing, wait, I'm watching HGTV episodes from like 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, wait a minute. Shoot. What year did this come out? <laughs> wait a minute. Um, but yeah. So no, I um, although if we still lived in that house, I would be in no rush to redo that bathroom because I, again, I liked it in there. Yeah. It did not have like the the modern trendy shiplap look. It looked like it was just old, like an old bathroom. Hmm. So classy old bathroom. Oh, wow. I don't Maybe. know if I'd go that far, know. but yeah. sure. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Another thing about wallpaper I was just thinking while we were talking is if you have never done wallpaper before, 
I think it can be intimidating. And so I think people opt to not do it be out of like fear. Do what um, I do it at because, a friend's house first. I helped Steve Piva with his wallpaper before I ever did I know, it. but I had wallpapered before and that. I'm like, so at least if really... I mess this up, it's at somebody else's oh my house. Gosh. You know? No, that's not the case. <laughs> um, Sorry, Steve. I think there were so many, like years ago, you hired wallpaper hangers. Yeah. Nobody was wallpapering their own houses. That's true. Um, you were hiring like the professionals. And so now with all the YouTubes and the DIY stuff that we watch, which is actually really cool because it gives people the option of doing things they couldn't afford. Yeah. Of to like hire somebody to do. It's kind of sticking it to the trades people, unfortunately. I, I hate well, to see in those some, guys. In some parts and some things just go to a professional. But when it comes to wallpapering, I mean... Yeah. It might not look perfect. It might not look as good as if a professional did it, but you can get the job done. I think using the peel and stick, like to start, is a really great option. Peel and stick is usually cheaper. Isn't it less you forgiving can, though? I've never used peel and stick, but I feel like once you stick it, you're like with glue, it's still wet and you can actually move the paper on the wall a little bit. No, no. It's literally peel and stick. Like you peel it, you stick it, and you can peel it off again. Oh, yeah. It's not like a sticker. It's like, remember the book covers we used to have to cover our books with yeah. at school? Yeah. It's like that. Like it just kind of, um, Interesting. like a vinyl-y. Okay. Most of them are washable. So those are things that you need to note too. If you do wallpaper in a bathroom that has like a shower or something like that, make sure you're getting wallpaper that is like a vinyl texture. Humidity. Yeah. Resilient. Peel and stick is really probably better for a bathroom that has like a shower Interesting. than paper because yeah. some wallpaper that you're hanging, like the glue wallpaper, again, not all of it. You'd have to read what kind of paper you have, is washable. Some of it is not. Yeah. If it gets wet, that's why you take down wallpaper with water. Yeah. Because it, only it doesn't easy. like it. Paper and water don't mix. And wallpaper doesn't like to come down at all that I've seen. <laughs> the wallpaper we've taken off is usually taking a lot a- of wallpaper down. Disaster. A lot of wallpaper. Yeah, we've got a lot more to go. A lot more to go. Anyway, okay, well, that's great. I feel like that's a really good start. And I know a lot of people out there have are very savvy. They know what they like. Mm-hmm. They know where to get it. You know, they know, you know how to budget for it. Yeah. But I also know, uh, I think a lot of people too, they will see something and like it and not even really know why. It's yeah. kind of like music. Like you hear something, you hear a chord progression or you hear a cadence, you hear a melody line and you, you don't necessarily have the theory to like put words to why you like it. Yeah. You just, wow, that really moves me. And I think the same thing goes for any art. I think any art and I think interior decorating is art. It's, it's an, you know, it's artwork and people like will either know right away, I love this uh, or I hate it. Right. I love how eclectic it is or I hate how chaotic it is and I need straight lines and I need to go back to Ikea and, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, I think to start to try and figure out why you like what you like is mm-hmm. helpful. Like when you're looking through magazines and you see things like, what about it? Like zero in on, you know, the things that are, oh, is it the color or is it like the style? Mm-hmm. Is it, you know, what the room looks like? I think one thing that people don't think about is – how there are some characteristics of a house that you can't just take what somebody does in a really old house, do it in a new house and it have the same look. Right. You know, or like, bring, like everybody's talking mid-century modern. We love mid- mid-century modern. You can't do just mid-century modern in any house. You can't. Right. Just or it's like a mess. Weird, yeah. It's terrible. But like ceiling height, mm-hmm. uh, window placement. These are things, these are huge things to change, right? If you're talking about, like, nobody's changing the ceiling height in their house. Um, Most people aren't even changing the window placement in their whole house, maybe, like, in one room or something. But, you know, so you can't necessarily do everything. It doesn't always translate. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't always do certain types of flooring in some houses. Right. That sort of thing. But sticking with what looks cool in that house is a, you know, it's also a good idea. And paint. So thinking about paint, a few really quick paint tips that I would give to people. Don't buy cheap paint. Don't buy cheap paint, first of all. but It's tempting, but don't do it. It's tempting also to go to like Home Depot or to Lowe's and look at the, or even Walmart, and look at the paint wall. There's a million paint chips and cards and things like that we want to look at. That is too overwhelming. The color is terrible. That the, the lighting is terrible in those places to try to pick colors. Unless your house is in a big box store. And, and never, ever pick a paint chip while you're in the store and ask them to make it right then for you and, and take it. Do not do that. 
resist the urge. Resist the urge to do that. Which is hard for people like us because we don't have a lot of time. So it's like, how many trips are you going to make? So here's a few tips. Number one, look at expensive paint company colors first. Okay. Not that you're going to order it. Okay. So Farrow and Ball, C2, even Ben Moore. Look, I I think if you started with like a Farrow and Ball and a C2 website and look at the colors that you like, if you, do you know why? They don't have 2 million colors to pick from. Right. They have very limited colors. like 19 that are really good colors. Like these are colors are not going to steer you wrong. So yeah. now you take that color and all these places match it. Yep. So you can take a color, you can go to the Ben Moore store and you can say, can you make me this paint color and Ben Moore paint? And right. they do that for you. Mm-hmm. A great in between is Ben Moore. So Ben Moore has a lot of colors, but never buy a paint color, but paint on the spot. You have to sample it in your house. Do not, yep. whatever you do, take it from a swatch and just buy the paint and start right. painting. You will not like it, I, I promise. Like it. Yeah, um, invest in samples. That's like what I did. Buy yeah. three, buy said, three yeah. samples. Buy three yep. samples and make it maybe some very... One of the things we did was we would always buy like variations of the same color in samples. And, you know, Home Depot samples are like, are they like still like seven bucks each I don't or know. whatever? It's like the best $21 you'll ever spend you know, to just say, oh, I really like this color, but in my house, I needed the shade lighter. Mm -hmm. And go home and throw it on the wall and let it dry. Put a second coat over the sample. We've done that too, because the first coat you can see through a lot of times. Yep. So. And when you paint a sample, this is just probably TMI for everybody, but when you paint a sample up on the wall, know that it's going to be like lighter once it's all up. Mm. Because a lot of times you're painting on a white wall And so it looks like, oh, no, this is going to be too dark. And once I get it all up, it's going to be too dark in here. It's usually the opposite. It usually doesn't have the saturation you wanted it to have once it's all up because you are looking at it in just contrast to white all around it. Yeah, that's true. Good advice. See, these are things. These are things. And finishes. Paint finishes, I think, are really important. Do you want to talk about Walnut Street or do you want me to? (laughs) We get, we're, we're just telling all of our mistakes, all the things we had to learn from. We did a lot of things wrong, but one of the things was in that house, it was built in 1900, beautiful, Queen Anne, Victorian, horsehair plaster everywhere. I loved the light reflection of the satin finish. <sighs> and the satin finish is also historically accurate. Mm-hmm. They didn't have eggshell, you know, a hundred years just ago. Just tell everybody else that I've always hated satin finish. Yeah, On walls. Do. Hate yeah, it. yeah. But we put it up and it literally showed everything. And it didn't help that, number one, we picked the most saturated colors ever. Every single room was like deep, deep saturated colors. This was back in 2008. It was. But the but the satin finish shows every single imperfection yep. everywhere in the wall. Uh, Anything that reflects light is going to show more imperfection in your walls. Right. If you have an older home, yeah. older walls that are just like not whatever the brand new drywall is yeah. <laughs> that are like perfect yeah, walls, yeah. you're going to see it. You're going to see the bumps. Right. And and some people like that. And there is something like really beautiful about it too. Um, as long as it's not like a giant like crack, like places blistering out and stuff, then you don't want to see that. But what I will say is the shinier finish, the m- easier it is to clean. So as you move towards matte or flat or even eggshell, the cleaning process, you're definitely taking some color off when you go to clean because it is a, a more porous surface. Like that's what makes that yeah, matte Not finish. when you're just dusting your walls, but if you are washing, washing a spot, if yeah. you're like, if you're washing something off, but eggshell is a classic interior wall finish. That's why most trim, that's why most trim is a semi-gloss or a high gloss because your trim takes the highest beating. Mm-hmm. So like your baseboards and your doorways and windows. And they're nice and washable. They're washable because yep. they have that that semi-gloss or even a high gloss or enamel finish. Yep. I would say the trends right now are trending towards less shine and paint. They're definitely more of a matte finish, which is nice and looks really nice. Yeah, it does. Um, but... Chalk can't boarding. wash it. Can't Chalk wash boarding. it. Like I know we we were just doing a, a paint and the guy was saying like, you don't want flat in this. You don't want matte because it will literally like you touch it and the oils from your hand will leave handprints on it. And he's like, it's like for places that get zero contact. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Again, that's only though if you're lit- if you're buying the made version of that paint. If you buy the really high-end paint, Mm -hmm. even in the matte finish, that doesn't happen, just so you know. There you go. 
Yep. So there are some of our interior design. Oh meanders. yeah, interior design. And I, I mean, I think it's great that we have places like Home Goods and Marshall, like all those places. They have just like awesome stuff to just and you can mix that it. are not expensive you can and you buy can buy a couple of things that are like yeah. higher end i know like you're really good at that you'll pick out something like a chair or something that is like from a you know a little more money a little bit bigger investment you know it's probably made better so it's going to last longer too but there's then, like just nobody's allowed to sit in it nobody's allowed to sit in it yeah. but it then you mix it with some stuff from i mean we've bought stuff from like building 19 remember like back when we were first married it's like all right, you get a couple of nice things and yep. then you want to finish out a room with and you Let have me just tell you this, Zachary a couple Thomas. hundred dollars. When we were buying rugs from Building 19, yeah. there were no expensive items in the house. There was no like, I picked out one expensive thing and then no, it was like, well, here's the Building 19 rug and there's the Big Lots couch. Yeah, what's wrong with that? We also had some yard sale stuff in there. A lot of yard sale stuff. We still had that hutch. Remember that we bought at that uh, yep. vintage stash store on um, Wickenden Street. I think uh, we yeah. got a lot of bang for our buck in those. But don't be afraid to go to at home. Don't be afraid to go to Home Goods no. and with a Just couple hundred dollars. Just don't do a and... whole room in one store. That's one thing I don't like. Okay. Like if you're gonna go to at home, if you're gonna go to Home Goods, don't do your entire room Home Goods. Like that's the that's the beauty of like the hodgepodge like you kind of mix it up a little bit yeah so you're like oh my gosh are, am i in home goods am i in at home right now because i can't tell because every single thing in here is matching yeah it's good too matchy 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 all right guys that's a wrap <laughs> that's a long episode maybe we should have done this in parts um but anyway yeah if you have any questions yeah send them to ashley oh yeah she's the, oh yeah uh, she's thanks. the guru no but. Uh, this is fun. Lots of fun. Lots right. of fun. But Lord. make your house your own. That's yeah. the fun part. That's the thing. It's like, I, I know it sounds like over super spiritual, but I think the Lord gives us these spaces. You know, we buy our houses and we know that it's a blessing from the Lord and we want to honor the Lord with our space and what he's given us. And so I think it's great to care for and to take care of it and make and it your own it. and invest yeah, in it and absolutely. make a place that your family loves to be and that you want to host people over at. not that you're always embarrassed to have people over your house right you know yeah and good. it never has anything to do with size and or how nice everything is it's you can tell the difference when somebody is intentional and cares versus just like i don't know like don't care at all or just like oh i'm too embarrassed oh we don't have any money blah 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 blah, blah. we've never we never had money right you know, and you just like figure it out. Yeah. Lots of yard sale shopping, lots of, lots of estates, like whatever, estate, estate shopping. Sales, yeah. We still have that chair we got at the uh, the, the Riviera, that yep. place in East Providence. Remember that? <laughs> yep. It's 25 bucks. Yeah. I love that yeah. chair. All right. Well, <laughs> that's it. Happy hunting out there, everybody. Have happy a great hunting. Day. Happy, happy. <laughs> it's hunting happy, season. It is hunting house. season. <laughs> well, I mean, just for, just for happy, rugs and lamps. Happy and, homemaking. Yeah, there you go. Oh, and you know what? Don't. Oh, buy, geez. See? Don't buy the white lights. <laughs> oh, God. You don't, want, you don't want your living room you're to feel like an light, OR. You feel you're talking about light bulbs right now. <laughs> yeah, light bulbs. Nothing looks good under that color. Uh, maybe your bathroom. Maybe that's the well, the light you need in your bathroom, but <laughs> everywhere else. Get, get like uh, something in the warmer what? Kelvin scale. A little warmer. Yeah. All right. Not too warm. Not the yellow. Not the yellow. Now nope. you don't want happy Halloween either. Nope. Like we have that on our porch. Couple it's of, terrible. Couple of spots. Yeah. It's orange. Add it to the list. Orange. Oh, not the list. Pray for me. This is Messer. And I'm Willa. This is our house from A to Z. Thanks for coming over. Who isn't that special?